in the absorption of the photons in the atmosphere due to water vapor in the atmosphere. And it turns out water vapor is the primary reason why the Earth is at a very nice, uh, comfortable climate and temperature, because without water vapor, the average temperature of the Earth would be minus 16 degrees centigrade compared to the average of plus 15 degrees centigrade that it currently is. Now, it turns out that even with the current levels of carbon dioxide, the temperature would be minus 16 degrees centigrade. Water vapor accounts for at least 90% of the heat trapping capability of the atmosphere. And how does that work? Well, it turns out the water molecule is not a linear molecule, it's a bent molecule. And because of that, because of the shape of the water molecule, it has so many different vibrational modes, each one of them that is able to absorb photons coming back from the Earth. Remember, the reason why the Earth is at this temperature is that the radiation from the Earth, which is, of course, infrared radiation, trying to make it back to space, has to make it through the atmosphere. And many of the frequencies are being absorbed primarily by the water vapor. The different vibrational modes for, for uh, water molecules in the atmosphere is what we call the symmetric vibration, which is where the hydrogen molecules can go back and forth like this between the oxygen and the, you know, getting closer and farther away from the oxygen. Asymmetric means that it can vibrate like this. Rocking means that the molecule can rock back and forth like this. Scissoring means that the molecule can vibrate back and forth like this. Wagging, the water molecule can vibrate like this. And twisting, meaning the water molecule can vibrate like this. And the combination of all, all those various ways in which the water molecule can vibrate allows it to absorb photons of all these various wavelengths. Notice there is a sizable gap between these. And this gap is important because that is the gap through which most of the energy from the Earth makes it back into space. If we go back to the, the graph that we have here, notice that this is anywhere from about 8 uh, micrometer wavelengths to about 13, 14 microwave, uh, micrometer wavelengths. Anything in between primarily gets back into space and everything to the left and the right of that gets blocked, again, primarily from the water vapor. Carbon dioxide does have an effect. You can, carbon dioxide has a band like right in here where it blocks out all the energy going back into space and has another region right here where the carbon dioxide molecule keeps things from going back into space, keeps energy from getting back into space. But notice there's a primary overlap between water vapor and carbon dioxide so that the carbon dioxide does not add that much heat trapping capability in the atmosphere. It's estimated that carbon dioxide holds back about 3 to 3.3 degrees centigrade of the differential between what it would be if there was no heat trapping gas in the atmosphere to what it is today. Again, the primary difference is the, all the various frequency modes that the water molecule can have. And that's why selectively the various uh, photons coming back up from the Earth get absorbed by water vapor more than any other gas in the atmosphere. And if it wasn't for that, life on Earth would be virtually impossible because with an average temperature of minus 16 degrees centigrade, life would virtually not exist on the earth. So we have our pleasant earth climate to thank to the very interesting capability of the water molecule. And that's how it goes.